Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to land this aircraft. Now, if you saw the last and previous episode, you will see that we got the concept of a landing down, and we talked about the poppy lights, which is something we're going to use today. So if you don't know what poppy lights are, I need you to go back and watch the last episode. All right, now, we do not have a good instant action mission for this, so we have to create our own. There is also the training section. If you hit training, SC-25T, there is a landing easy mode. However, this is a very long and drawn out landing mission. If you want to practice over and over and over again, this is not a good way to do it. So instead, we need to use the mission editor and create our own mission. That way you can load it up anytime you want and just practice your landings like ASAP, okay? So let's get this done. We're going to go to mission editor, create a new mission. We're going to leave it in caucuses. Don't change anything. All right, now that the mission editor has loaded in, we can right click to drag the map around. We can zoom in with scroll wheel. I'm gonna scroll to Batumi down here. One of the reasons is because this airfield has poppy lights, not all airfields do. And the next thing we wanna do is place an aircraft down on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and select the aircraft here. I'm gonna place it somewhere back here that gives us enough distance and time to be able to land a Batumi. I'm gonna left click. Perfect. But you notice how the aircraft is facing up. So what we want to do is set up a waypoint by just clicking anywhere up here. And it will make the aircraft turn uh, towards the first waypoint. However, if you unfortunately keep clicking, you're going to make waypoints, right? So we don't want that. We don't care about them. We're not even going to use these for right now. So you can delete them by hitting here. If you would like to stop making waypoints, you can either hit edit and now if you left click anywhere, you're fine, or you can right click outside without clicking on anything. All right, awesome. Now let's go ahead and select the aircraft back again. Let's go ahead and change it to Russia and change this to the SU-25T. There you go. And the skill set needs to be set to player. Next, we need to change the altitude and speed. Take note that this is in feet and knots. For this particular area, we're gonna set this to 2,500 and our speed to 200 knots. Perfect. Next, we can change our payloads if you click here. And as you can see, there's our little aircraft. I have all the different payloads that I can select by hitting here. I can change what's underneath any of the payloads by right-clicking and selecting new things. We're not going to worry about that. Hit empty. And we can change the liveries here. I like this one. And if you would like to change your fuel, you can do so as well. Here, we're going to leave it at 100%. This is fine. Let's go back to route and just click off of the aircraft, click back on it, and just make sure that this is saved. Sometimes something wonky happens. You need to punch the numbers in again. This looks fine. So the plan of attack is we're going to fly out here. We're going to get past the airfield. We're going to make a left turn like a racetrack turn and continue to turn left until we hit Batumi. Okay? And that will be a landing. So we want to practice this all the time, so we need to save it. Press File, Save, and then save it as uh, Landing Training. This way, you can launch this anytime you want and practice at your leisure. All right, let's go ahead and actually fly this mission. So I'm going to go to Flight and Fly Mission. This will pop up if you have not saved. And now just hit Start and let it load without clicking or alt-tabbing out anything. All right, now that we've loaded in, the first thing that's going to happen as soon as I hit Fly is I'm going to need to pitch the aircraft back a little bit because the nose of the aircraft is going to want to drop, and I'm going to need to trim for that. And then also apply adequate amount of thrust in order to maintain a 350 kph as we're flying downwind. Let's do that now. Hit fly, pitch back to maintain that altitude a little bit, and I'm going to trim back. As I trim back, I'm going to relax the stick, relax the stick until I let go completely. I've stopped trimming. As you can see, our VSI has arrested at zero. We're perfectly trimmed. And we're doing 360 kph. We may need to just adjust the throttles a little bit. But this looks fine. There's the runway to our left. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend our downwind quite a bit down in order to give us a lot of time to adjust the landing. This will allow us to play around with our throttles and our speeds in order to make sure that we hit the runway at exactly the right angles and speeds. Also, you see how we have ENR right now? Don't worry about that. Go ahead and hit one several times until that disappears. We'll go over that in the future. And as soon as we're about midfield from the runway, we're going to drop our gear and our first notch of flaps. Remember, this will slow us down. And as soon as we drop the first notch of flaps, it will balloon our nose up, which means we need to push forward on the stick to keep that from happening. There goes the gear. 
And here comes the first notch of flaps. There goes the nose, so I need to push forward to keep the nose from going up too high. And there goes our speed, as we've already lost 20 kph. And you may need to retrim, and you may need to throttle forward a little bit to maintain at least 300 kph. You don't want to get below that right now. Trim is necessary. Under normal circumstances, you would want to start making your left-hand turn once the end of the runway has passed the left wingtip of this aircraft. But we are going to extend down just a bit more. Now, when we start making our turn to the left, what we want to make sure is that we do not overbank the aircraft. Do not go past 45 degrees of bank. In fact, try and keep it at 30 if you can, because as you can see, our AOA is already dangerously high. So if you start overbanking, you're risking yourself quite a bit of a stall. Alright, let's go ahead and start making that left turn now. And it's okay if the nose dips a little bit. But let's try not to lose too much altitude out here. As you can see, this is about 30 degrees of bank right here. Nice, gentle, with a little bit of a pull back in order not to lose too much altitude. And we're just going to keep track of the runway. And now you see we're too fast. We're starting to shake at 350. I'm going to roll out here to square up our base. Throttle back a little bit. And start turning left. Once the runway is about the 10 o'clock if it's on your left or 2 o'clock if it's on your right, you should be making these turns. And here, we're going to try and attempt to maintain 300 kph. As you can see, we have two white and two red right now, which is perfectly awesome. But we are too fast, so slow down a little bit by pitching back. We need to throttle back a little bit so we don't gain too much altitude. And now I'm also going to drop my last notch of flaps so I don't have to worry about it later. So here comes the last notch of flaps. Now I may need to push the nose forward and trim. Trim forward. Looking good. Too white, too red. Let's go ahead and make sure our gear's down, flaps are down, perfectly fine. I'm going to throttle up a little bit and nose down a little bit because we are getting a little slow. We're 290. I'm going to throttle up more, more. See how we've turned to three red? And now we're back to two white, two red. Throttle back a little bit. And that's it. Right around here, I'm going to abandon my poppy lights. I must start throttling back until I hit idle right around here. And I'm going to start pitching back. This is my round out. And I'm keeping the nose roughly with the horizon, bleeding off energy, and gentle touchdown. Now I'm going to press W to break and maintain center line with rudders. If you require to stop quicker, press P in order to deploy the parachute. While holding down the brakes. Once you slow down enough, the parachutes should cut on their own. If there's a lot of wind, a lot of wind pushing you back, those parachutes may stay there until you come to a complete stop. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it completely right now. As you can see, the parachutes are still attached. Oh, well, there you go. That got rid of them. And in order to get another parachute back, you're going to need to rearm your aircraft. As you can see, the parachute has popped the little container on the left over here. So we're not going to have another parachute unless we rearm. Go ahead and quickly taxi off because there could be other aircraft trying to come in for a landing. Clean up your flaps. Back to clean. Go ahead and restart now and practice this on your own until you can do the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and step this up a notch. A night nice landing. So if we go to the instant action and under the SU-25T and the Caucasus map, we do the dusk landing in Mozdok, which is really a freaking night landing, to be honest. All right, so here we are for a dusk landing. I'm going to put that in air quotes because it's pretty much 
black outside. Can't see a damn thing. And we also cannot see the runway in front of us. So in order to get the runway lights to show up, we have to call up ATC. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to need to use our comms menu. And I'll show you how to do that next. Also, always read the briefing. It shows you all the key commands so that you know what to do. And uh, Wagzy is going to let us know what's going on right now. So I'm going to hit fly. You're placed on approach to Mazdaq airfield for landing. Get her down in one piece. Press escape and then select briefing to view a list of useful key commands. Thanks, Wags. All right, let's go ahead and hit pause here real quick. So uh, we have some new information being displayed for us. And as we can see, we are currently in the LNDG or landing mode. And at the very tippy top, we have a little bit more information than what we're used to. The bottom row tells you exactly what you're doing versus the top row, which is telling you what the landing system wants you to do. So we're currently at 320 kph at 1021 meters. The R indicates that we are using greater altitude because we're low enough to the ground where that can work. And at the very tippy top, it wants us to do 280 kph and 993 meters. Additionally, we also have two circles, one small circle here, one bigger circle here. Whenever the numbers at the top are matching and you're perfectly where you need to be, these two circles will converge together, indicating that the aircraft is perfectly happy along the flight path. The reason why this is so important is because this airfield does not have poppy lights. So without poppy lights, it's really difficult to try and know if you're on the glide slope. But if you're using the landing system, the landing system will tell you literally at the very tippy top exactly what speed and what altitude you should be doing at any given point. So makes it very easy, even without poppy lights. Don't worry about the two circles. You're going to see how they work as I make my way down. If you focus on these two circles, you're going to be all over the place. So focus on the numbers on top. That's your key. Next, we cannot see the runway because the lights are all off. We need to call up ATC and actually request an inbound, which that will also turn on the lights for us. I'm going to unpause with pause break. I'm going to hit the comms menu with backslash and request permission to land. Let's go ahead and do that now. So pause break, backslash, hit F5 for ATC. We can also use our mouse here, and the very top row will tell us what the closest runway to us is, which is Mazdaq, that's correct, and we're going to request inbound. Assistant, 105, was red. Assistant. Следующий курс 084, удаление 2, давление 745,97, посадочный 26, занимайте высоту круга. Beautiful. All right, so don't worry about any of that gibberish. We're actually going to close this menu out. We're not going to use this anymore. And now we're just going to need to worry about configuring for landing. So first gear, since we're below 400 kph, and the first notch of flaps, which is F. And since we're at 300 kph, Slowing down, we can probably dip the nose down now to get the speed to match, which is perfectly fine. And I'm going to throttle up since we're a little below what it wants us to do. Perfect. And I'm going to drop the last notch of flaps here since we're close enough and everything's perfectly fine. I'm going to need to push the stick forward to keep it from ballooning and confirm that we have three green for gear and both flaps are set. Awesome. Next, we also want to turn our landing lights. So right, alt, and L. If you hit that twice, it should do the landing lights for far. If you do it once, it's for near, twice is for far, and I think three times is for off. And it'll make a bit of a difference later on as we land. All right, so we're a little bit uh, slow. So I'm going to pitch forward and throttle forward because we're a little low and a little slow. And this is going to help us get back to where we need to be. And I'm also trimming the aircraft to help me out. Right, so we're back on speed. Now we just need to get back on altitude. Perfect. I'm going to throttle back here to continue our descent rate. And just make sure that you're perfectly aligned with the runway. That is the outer beacon. This is normal. And continue to trim. Constantly check that you're aligned with the runway. You see how the two circles are happening together right now, since we're doing what it wants us to do? Except we're a little fast, but this is okay. That is the inner beacon. This is also normal, and it's the last sound you're going to hear before landing. 
Okay, so we can abandon the numbers. Let's go ahead and do a visual approach. I'm going to go ahead and throttle back to idle. And I'm going to start rounding out. So gently pull back, pull back, pull back. And let it bleed off that energy flare for the landing. There's the main gears. There's the nose gear. W for brake. We're done. No drama, nothing, everything's A-OK. -okay. All right, here's the last lesson for today. And we're going to go back to instant action. And the Marianas map, if you have it, obviously. If not, just watch and learn. We have the landing section here. All right, welcome to the hardest lesson in uh, landing that there is, and that will be with crosswind landings. We're also going to have a slight little bit of navigation as well. So, uh, as always, read the briefing so you know what's going on. Uh, but I'm going to explain everything for you, what's going on here. I'm going to hit fly. Fuel, 1500. And hit pause. So, here we are in Marianas, and what we want to do is land on the runway over there. It's a really big, long strip of runway. All right. There's other runways over here, so make sure you're not landing on some other runway you're not supposed to. But uh, there are a few new things to consider. So with navigation, we actually have several different modes. Uh, and route mode is what you would use in order to navigate to a waypoint. The ENR telling us that we are en route to that location will also display on the HSI, the horizontal situation indicator. Now, it's a little uh, messy in here if you don't know what's going on, but just generally speaking, what you'll see is that in the middle, there is a thin yellow needle. And this yellow needle shows the direction to the waypoint. And then just on the outside of it, you have two double white arrows. This is the course needle, which shows the desired course. On the upper left-hand corner, you have the distance to the actual waypoint. And on the upper right, you see the desired course to get to that waypoint. So that was a whole lot of crap, right? <laughs> but essentially, what we want to do is make sure that we are aligned with the yellow and the white needles at the same place. What does this mean? Well, if we hit F10, this map is a little difficult to read because there's a lot of green nonsense here. You can change the type of map that you have over here. Um, this is a little bit easier to see. This is the Anderson Air Force Base that we're going to be landing at. Now, the en route mode is telling us to go 180, which is down south here. And the waypoint is somewhere 8 kilometers right in front of us. So uh, our thin yellow needle is going to be showing us a direction to that waypoint. So it, right now, it's going to show us directly to it. So let's say it's this little spot right here, this little gray zone, just, just to make life easier, okay? So if I'm over here, the needle's gonna point directly to it. If I'm over here, the needle's gonna point directly to it. If I'm over here, it's gonna point directly to it. That's all the yellow needle does, simple. It points to the waypoint. However, the double white arrows will show you the desired course. The desired course is to go from here down to here, and then it's gonna tell us to go left towards the Air Force Base which will roughly align us with the runway. So if I'm over here, yeah, the yellow needle is going to point to the waypoint, but the double white lines are going to be very unhappy because you're not where you need to be. You need to be over here flying south along the desired course. That's where the yellow and the double white start to contradict each other. And I'll show you what that looks like as we're, we're going because it's a little complicated to talk about it right now. But um, it, it's, it's going to be part of your navigational um, experience in a future lesson because navigation is kind of difficult and simple at the same time in a frog foot. It's, it's kind of weird. Okay, so let's go ahead and press F1. And let's go ahead and start flying towards that desired waypoint. I'm going to hit pause, break. And the only thing I'm going to do is just maintain altitude and speed. That's it. And all we're doing is we're just going to fly towards that course. We're at six kilometers away. I'm going to turn right a little bit to get on course. And that's about right here. Good. And I'm just going to continue on. Don't worry too much about that circle on the heads of display. It's a little bit more trouble than it's worth trying to follow that silly thing. Um, the HSI is more than awesome in order to just follow waypoints. And we're three kilometers away. As you can see at the very bottom, 2.6, 2.5, this tells us the distance to it. And on the right hand side, the one tells us that's waypoint one that we currently have. And we're one kilometer away and it should automatically switch once we hit zero or close to it. 
And there you go. So now we're in return mode. Let's go ahead and pause. All right, so what is return mode? So in route mode gives you an end route towards the waypoint. Very easy, self-explanatory. Now, when we go to return mode, that's part of our landing system. So return mode is telling us that we currently need to turn right for nine kilometers to a bearing of 209. So somewhere over there. Okay, uh, the airfield's over there. Why are we going over there? Ah, so the reason why, if we hit F10, is because the landing system in return mode will not bring us directly to the airport because that's not a good setup for landing. Instead, what it's going to do is get you about 10 nautical miles away from the airfield. So from here, I don't know, somewhere out here, and it is going to want us to fly to that point, which as you can see, is to our right. We will have to turn right in order to hit that section. And that will give us a setup to land at the runway. So return mode does not bring you directly to the airport. It will bring you to a point 10 nautical miles outside of the airport to align yourself with the runway. As soon as we hit this spot over here, it is going to turn to landing mode. And on landing mode, it is going to point us directly to the runway middle section. And from here to here, we should be perfectly aligned with the runway for a nice landing. That's how the system works. And it is what confuses a lot of people, but it is very simple. So return mode will simply bring you 10 miles outside of the airport to set you up for landing. And if you want to skip that and go straight to the airport for some reason, you can hit one and go straight to landing, and then it will just point you directly to the airfield. But for now, let's go ahead and see what this thing looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna hit F1, I'm gonna unpause. Let's go ahead and make that turn to the right and fly to that waypoint. So 209, and we're roughly right there. Well, let's go ahead and actually go directly to where the yellow needle wants us to go. Okay, so we have four kilometers to go. Our runway, remember, is back there. Okay, now we've gotten close enough and it's switched to landing, landing mode. And landing mode is telling us, hey, turn left and head straight for the airfield. We are set up for a landing. Let's go ahead and make a sharp turn to the left. Let's not exceed 45 degrees of bank if we can help it. Although we're going fast enough that it's not too much of trouble. And unfortunately, we're not going to be perfectly lined up, but it will demonstrate something cool with the needles here. Okay, so there's a the runway. Let's go ahead and pause here. So go ahead and notice that we have a little bit of a mismatch between the white two lines and the yellow line. So the desired course is trying to tell us that we should be aligned with the runway. And the yellow is telling us, hey, that's the direction where we need to go, right? So what's essentially happening is that this is the runway and this is where it wants us to be along this path. This line that I just drew this is basically your desired course. And it makes sense because that's what, you know, lined up with the runway itself, right? Versus the yellow, which is trying to point us towards the runway. So the yellow is telling us go this way and the white lines are telling us we should be over here. Hence the little bit of a mismatch. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is make a left-hand turn until we are along this line over here, our desired course. And then we're going to make a right turn and align ourselves perfectly with the runway. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and make a left-hand turn. Just to align ourselves a little bit more with the runway. As you can see, the yellow and the white are now happy. And now if I turn to the right to align myself directly with the runway, we're more or less right there. Look at them. They're almost perfectly happy now. Okay, so let's go ahead and ignore this for now because we have visual on the runway. We don't need to use this anymore. Let's switch to landing mode. All right, so we're way too fast. So I'm going to throttle back. I'm going to pitch back and I'm going to deploy speed brakes to slow us down. Now, I know right now that winds are pushing me from the right. Now, the reason why I know this is because you see how our tail is? When the wind is pushing us from the right up against the tail, it is going to swivel us into the wind. 
So if there is wind coming from the right, it's going to hit the tail and it's going to rotate or yaw the plane to the right. I know for a fact that wind is pushing us to the left off course. So what I need to do is I need to do a crab landing. <laughs> and these are easier said than done. These are tough, all right? These, this is something you're going to need to practice quite a bit. Even I'm not 100% on this all the time. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm actually going to fly sideways like this, essentially, in order to fly straight forward because the wind is trying to push me to the left. And the way I'm going to know that I am aligned with the runway is that my ass sitting down here should be aligned with the center line of the runway. So right now, are we aligned? We are not. We're to the left of where we need to be. So I don't give a damn where my nose is pointing. I give a damn where my ass is heading. <laughs> it's essentially what, I, uh, what, what this looks like. So while I'm sitting here, I'm going to look towards the runway, and I'm going to more or less uh, roll the aircraft left and right in order to control me going left or right of the runway. I'm not going to worry about rudders. Let the wind push my nose where it needs to go. This is fine. We're not going to use rudders right now. And we're just going to use our ailerons in order to roll the plane to keep ourselves centered with the runway. Which, again, is easier said than done. All right, let's take a quick look at what's going on here. So we are 440 kph. We're uh, quite a bit faster than where we should be, but the altitude is perfectly fine. And as you can see, we have two white and two red, which indicates exactly just that. Now, we're going to screw this up a little bit because we're going to deploy gears and flaps and that's going to make us balloon a little bit so we're going to we're going to struggle a little bit here so we're going to struggle with wind to keep ourselves center lined we're going to struggle a little bit to get ourselves on speed and on altitude so this is why this is a difficult lesson and i don't encourage anyone to use this as your initial way of learning how to land because it's hard okay but let's give this a shot and uh, see see what happens it's not going to be pretty okay so i'm going to trim the plane I'm going to pitch down. back, and gear I'm going to go ahead and deploy that gear, and first notch of flaps, keep the nose forward, and notice how my ass is now aligned with the runway. Now, my nose is pointed here, but I don't care about that. I'm looking this way. I'm going to push forward on the throttles. I'm going to pitch back a little bit to slow down. I've still got my speed brakes deployed. I'm going to deploy my last uh, flaps. So, full flaps now. It's going to balloon me more. I'm going to push forward a little bit. More throttle, because we're sinking too much. Forward here. All right. We're on speed. And we're more or less where we need to be. Too white, too red. And I'm trying to roll so my ass is aligned with the center of the runway. And I'm just looking at the runway from my ass cheeks. Okay, abandon the poppy lights. Throttle, throttle, throttle. A little bit and throttle idle and let's pause here okay the other thing that's going to happen uh there are two problems here the first problem is the runway is not straight it's uh it's a little wavy and we're on a down gradient of a runway so it's not perfectly flat uh, these maps are a little bit more advanced than the ones that we're used to in georgia georgia are pretty flat straight runways uh, in these maps, like Mariana's, we are uh, introduced to slightly more complex runways like this one. Uh, this presents a little bit of a challenge, but it's 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 not too terribly difficult. Uh, we're not going to care too much about that, but what we do need to care about is how we land. Uh, because the wind is pushing us from right to left, uh, what I need to do is, on landing, on touchdown, I need to kick the rudder left in order to align the nose of the aircraft with the... Um, the way that the runway is pointing. If I try and land sideways like this, I may skid off the runway, I may roll the plane. Uh, a lot of bad stuff can happen. So while I'm pushing the throttle to idle, as I currently am, and I'm trying to round out the plane, I'm also going to kick the rudder to the left. And I'm going to try and maintain centerline by still rolling the plane left or right. The Advanced way of landing this, the best way of landing this, is because the wind's coming in from the right, I should be a little bit right of the runway, as we are a little bit right now, although it should be a little bit more to the right. The reason is, when I kick the rudder and I align myself with the runway, the wind's not going to stop pushing me. The wind is still going to push me to the left. By the time I touch down with my wheels, if I keep the nose straight, uh, I'm going to be over there somewhere. 
So if you align yourself a little right of the runway, by the time you round out and you kick the rudder to align yourself with the runway, the wind should push you roughly towards the center of the runway. And the last thing is that it's okay and it's actually preferred to land on your right gear first into the wind. Since the wind's coming from my right, I'm gonna try and uh, land a little bit with a little bit of a right wing so my right wheel touches down first, then my left wheel, and then my nose wheel. It's gonna get a little bit shaky and a little bit rocky, <laughs> but let's give it a try, okay? Here we go. And yeah, she kind of rolled a little bit. There's a nose. All right, tricky runway, right? And I need to push the stick right into the wind to keep the wind from pushing me off the runway and rolling me, all right? And because this runway is so damn uneven, the nose of the aircraft keeps bouncing up. This is fine, we are perfectly A-OK. -okay. Just come to a complete stop. So as you can see, that got a little hairy, right? <laughs> There's a lot going on with a crosswind landing. And uh, it's not easy, which is why I recommend this to be your last lesson in terms of landing. If you can master this and do it well over and over again, you're okay with landings at this point. Pat yourself on the back and start moving on to the next lesson. All right, that was way too much. Let's go ahead and end it right here, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.